See what happens when a headache strikes. Look, pain mounts up. You feel dull, depressed. Tension puts nerves on edge. What do most doctors recommend? G'day there, my name's Chris. And I'm Nathan. And this is Cinema Biosis, the show where we take a look at a film and its strange and oftentimes baffling connections to other media. And today we're talking about Ricky O, The Story of Ricky, which is a 1991 Hong Kong film written and directed by Lam Nai Choi. And look, we should say, we always put a gore warning at the beginning of our videos just in case you've got kids around or something. But more than ever, this applies today because, whoa, Ricky O is a violent film. That scene with the old guy about eight minutes in. He gets his nose taken off with a wood plane. Like, he gets smashed right up his forehead. It's disgusting. <sighs> I screamed and I've seen it before. That would have hurt so much. <laughs> so this was a film I had heard so much about growing up. You know, I read about it in film books, I read about it in film magazines, but it wasn't one I tracked down until I was a teenager and working in a DVD store. A single copy just showed up one day and you better believe I snatched that baby up. And when I watched it, it instantly became a favourite of mine. Oh yeah, man. In high school, everyone's like, you seen Ricky O? But I got, <laughs> I got it for two bucks at a secondhand shop on DVD recently. What? <laughs> That's got to be a sign, right? Like someone telling us that we were always meant to do this review together. <laughs> This film is definitely a bit of a weird one because it's kind of hard to pin down a little. It doesn't really have a genre. Like, I guess it's a prison movie because it takes place in a prison, but it's also a lot more. Uh, you could say martial arts, but it's not exactly like you're going to go Enter the Dragon, Drunken Master, Ricky O. No, they're very different tonally. It's so strange, even in some parts it feels like a really silly, whimsical comedy. There's literally scenes where the music goes almost Disney-like, you know, flute and stuff, and then some guy gets his head crushed. You're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to a lot of films we discuss on this channel, Ricky O actually has quite a bit of plot. Like, things actually happen in scenes, which was so refreshing. I guess that's because Ricky O actually has a lot of ideas and themes it wants to explore, alongside, you know, the enjoyable visceral violence, of course. It goes into, like, you know, the prison system as, like, a commodity sort of thing, because it's a private prison. And they just treat the, the, well, the inmates as slaves, basically. Yeah, the warden is essentially a sleazy businessman taking advantage of the prisoners to make profit. And he's this looming kind of terrifying presence over the whole film because he's away on holiday for most of the runtime, but you can't escape his kind of shadow over the prison. <laughs> So he's kind of the main antagonist of the entire film. With a spoilt brat kid. Oh, yeah, this kid who follows him everywhere. And we use the term kid very loosely because it's clearly a grown man. It's a bit confusing why he's there. Comedic purposes? I don't, I don't know what they were going for there. Like, is this meant to be funny? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's honestly more unsettling than anything else. But that kid is just so hateable. I love when he trips on the carpet because why not? He's a horrible person. But then we see his dad punish the poor prisoner for not laying it out correctly. Yeah, they gouge his eyes out. Oh, they do, and it's just horrible. <laughs> but yeah, perhaps unsurprisingly, the main character of our film is named Ricky, and he arrives at this private prison and instantly establishes himself as a badass. Like, he just strolls on into this massive prison with all the other new prisoners, and everyone else around him is super scared, but he's just so laid back and relaxed. But even as it goes, he becomes more... He's sympathetic towards the other prisoners as well. So you're like, 
you're rooting for him sort of thing. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's right, Ricky. You're a badass, but you care about everyone else. Yeah, he cares about the prisoners because we find out a lot of them have been imprisoned longer than they should be so the system can churn a profit. In many ways, the prison itself is the ultimate criminal and Ricky won't stand for the injustice because he's essentially a superhero. He's been fighting organized crime the last few years after learning a special martial arts technique from his uncle, which is a different way to breathe, I guess? He just stops and starts breathing like, oh man, this dude's in trouble. Yeah, because whenever he's using this technique, he becomes super strong, which is why he can essentially turn people into geysers of blood. Oh, and heals himself, like he's all messed up. And he just stops and meditates, has a breath, plays a flute at one stage, and he's all good, ready to go. Like life-threatening injuries. Speaking of playing instruments, I guess this breathing technique also gives him other powers as well. You know, like playing synthesizer lines on a whistling leaf. Sounds like she's hitting a baby with a cat. You have to listen to the notes she's not playing. <laughs> I can do that at home. But yeah, Ricky is in jail for absolutely decimating some drug dealers after they killed his girlfriend. Well, kind of killed, I guess. Drug dealers kidnap her, try to have their way with her, and she resists them. Yeah, she tries to run away, and for some reason she falls off the top of a building and turns into a bad dummy. <gasps> when she falls you're like oh my god this dramatic scene i don't know why she went up on the roof but anyway and then she just it's, it's just like cut away not even like a mannequin would have looked better than whatever they threw out there in her dress just have the drug dealers shoot her because i mean they go on to shoot ricky when he comes to seek revenge they shoot him five times and ricky's so badass that he actually carries around those bullets in his chest <laughs> and we totally know his girlfriend's death means a lot to Ricky because they're definitely super in love. We can tell that from the single awkward scene we get where they fly a remote controlled plane for some reason. Sorry, a remote controlled plane and a remote controlled <laughs> helicopter. He steals the controllers and they're running around. I'm like, what about the plane? Wouldn't it have crashed by now? Like, I'm more concerned about the expensive remote control plane flying around. <laughs> <laughs> so, over the course of this film, Ricky discovers that the prison is doing some pretty shady things. They got a massive poppy farm on top of the prison, growing drugs. Which, of course, Ricky hates because he hates drugs, because drug dealers killed his girlfriend. So, he decides to take down the prison, but standing in his way is the administration. Four prisoners who get special treatment and are essentially overseers of each cell block and a whole bunch of their cronies. And we must say very quickly that a lot of the names of characters, specifically these four special prisoners, can change depending on which version of the movie you have. The dub westernizes a lot of content and names, but the subtitles sometimes keep the original names, but it depends on which version you have. But in our version of the film, these characters are Hai, Huang Chung, Tarzan, and White God. And each one seems to have their very own skill set. Like White God can attack from a distance. Yeah, the one who throws the cables with the little needles on them. <laughs> Huang has a very special form of Kung Fu that allows her to create essentially visual trails of herself because she's moving so fast. And she can also stop your heart with a punch, which of course Ricky solves by, I guess, punching himself again in the chest, which I guess is kind of medically accurate. Yes, yeah, science! So Tarzan, he's the best kung fu fighter in the prison. He's also like seven foot tall. Oh, he's huge. But again, like most problems in this movie, Ricky O solves them by just punching them. <laughs> and last but not least is High, who is just a down and dirty enforcer who's willing to do whatever it takes to win a fight, 
including Cheat. And we see this in perhaps the most famous scene from Ricky O where Hai has a duel with Ricky and he uses a knife that was given to him by the assistant warden and also a bunch of ground up glass that he throws in Ricky's eyes to blind him. Yeah, but like <laughs> he busts a water pipe and it sprays water and he's like, oh, and he's good. Not only did he get glass in his eye, he had the tendons in his arm cut. But that doesn't matter, does it? He knots it with his teeth in his other hand and he's like, yeah, all good. <laughs> yeah, but that's okay because Hai can just cut his own stomach open and use his intestines to choke Ricky out. <laughs> if this fight sounds amazing, it is, trust us. <laughs> Honestly, it sounds like we're making it up, but this is legitimately what happens in the movie. But I guess, in many ways, the Warden is not just a metaphorical monster. He's a literal monster. Because one <laughs> of the weirdest scenes in this whole film is at the end when Ricky confronts the Warden and the most baffling thing happens. He's gross. It looks like something out of um, Brain Dead or Dead Alive, depending on what country you're in. Peter Jackson movie, where the grandma grows huge at the end, that big zombie monster thing. It kind of looks like that. Just this big puppeteered thing. Whoa. Yeah. He just in he inexplicably goes like, I know the same techniques as you, Ricky, and then does something completely different. <laughs> he just goes into a giant monster <laughs> that Ricky then has to fight and kills by putting him in a meat grinder. Oh, man. And he's like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> but it's awesome the whole Look, time. Look, I pretty much had one reaction to everything in this movie. What? So this film was produced by Golden Harvest, who have given us a lot of great films over the years, including the Jackie Chan exploitation classic, The Protector, which we've spoken about in a previous cinema biosis. And the general story was based on a Japanese manga called Ricky O by Masahiko Takajo and Sarawatara Tetsuya. But the manga seems to cover more ground than the film and continues on past the end of the narrative we see. Oh, okay. Oh. A lot of manga stuff does. <laughs> they, they just seem to keep going. Yeah, that, that seems to be the way with manga adaptions. There's either way too much to fit in or not enough, which is why you get filler in a heap of anime TV shows. It's because they run out of manga to adapt, which is why you get things like Goku's driving lesson in Dragon Ball Z. This is the highway, Mr. Piccolo. You don't have to drive like an old lady out here. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Was that a challenge? Honestly, I'm pretty glad they didn't try to cram everything in from the manga because it would just make the film feel cluttered and way less focused. And besides, if you want to see a bit more of the story in a visual form, there's two animes you can actually track down. Ricky O, The Wall of Hell from 1989, which covers the prison arc, which we see in the film adaption, and a follow-up called Ricky O, Child of Destruction from 1990, which adapts some of the plot lines after the prison. I want to see those anime movies now. <laughs> I actually checked them out and they look pretty much as violent as the live action film. It reminded me a little of Fist of the North Star, which I know you're a big fan of. Yeah. Well, this movie reminded me of Fist of the North Star in some spot. <laughs> look, there's a pretty long tradition of Japanese narratives where superpowered people just punch bad guys until they explode, which is just the best. <laughs> <laughs> We're pretty simple, Nathan. Let's be honest here. We don't need much for it to be awesome. Did he punch him? Did his head explode afterwards? That was awesome. <laughs> I mean, that's our metric for every film, isn't it? I give it two exploded heads. <laughs> this movie was cited as an influence on a pretty famous and influential game series. An influence? On what? Like Mortal Kombat? <laughs> I am shocked but impressed you got that straight away. Hey, hey. I'm like two guys fighting fatalities. <laughs> Obviously, the super goriness of it all has influenced the fatalities from Mortal Kombat, but I'd say there's also the X-Ray mode from more recent games, mirroring the infamous prison yard fight from Ricky O. Oh, yeah, that was sick. And of course, you've got your fighters with special abilities like Scorpion in Mortal Kombat and White God in Ricky O. Yeah, throws a spear. <laughs> Get over here! <laughs> So, interestingly, there's a 2005 Hong Kong film called Super Powerful Man, which is just the best title ever. Cuts to the chain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does, it does exactly what it says on the box, I guess. <laughs> it's like the equivalent of calling this movie Gut Punch Man. <laughs> 
This film in some regions is known as Story of Ricky 2. What? And it stars Fan Sui Wong, who plays Ricky in the original film, although he's playing a totally different character now who is just similar to Ricky. It's also incredibly hard to track down because it didn't get released in the US or Europe. That's kind of like a fan film sequel. Yeah, pretty much. If I'm being honest, the parts I've seen look like a fan film. It has that really dodgy digital look that plagued a lot of low-budget films around that time period, and it just lacks that grittiness of the original that was part of its charm, you know, along with the practical effects. Well, that's what makes this movie is the practical effects. Like, yeah, some look dodgy as, like, the chick falling off the building. And even when the guy falls on the nails and gets a spike through his eye, like, it's an obvious dummy they just slammed down on some nails. But it just, I don't know, it gives you that effect, you're like, oh... And then you're like, you just laugh. Gives it a bit of extra charm. Oh, totally. Dodgy practical effects still work more often than not because they're physically there in the scene. The actors can react to them. You you know, they can get spattered by gore. It's it's something physical and tangible. Dodgy computer effects, though, oh, they rarely ever work. And Super Powerful Man is full of some dodgy computer effects. <laughs> All right, Nathan, you would recommend Ricky Ho, oh, I assume. Oh, yeah, I recommend it, definitely. If you can tra track it down, like, it's definitely worth a watch. Watch it with other people, it's very funny. Well, would you recommend it, Chris? I know you're on the fence. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look, <laughs> uh, yeah, I literally called you after re-watching this and went, is Ricky Ho the perfect film? <laughs> I know there's a lot of classic films out there, but come on. Ricky O reigns supreme. Thanks for watching, folks. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. We regularly upload videos about cult film, B-grade trash, and other cinematic oddities. Until next time, stay safe and stay weird.